I have a great relationship with all of the people on my team. Or at least I thought I did. Something is really weird lately. Our meetings have no energy. People just sit there quietly and look down. When I walk down the hallway, I've even noticed people turn and walk somewhere else, like they're avoiding me. I don't know for sure, but I think I've heard people whispering about me to each other. I have no idea what's going on, but it definitely feels wrong. Oh man, so many of our heroes have people talking about them. (laughs) And you know what? If you're a leader, people are talking about you. So you were worried about it? Let us disabuse you of that fear. They are talking about you and watching everything. Do you feel better about being a leader now? (laughs) (laughs) That is true, Chris. That's uh, a kind of a byproduct of today's episode, but it is definitely the case that you are under the microscope and people are talking about you. And the key theme for today's episode is that good leaders assume all written communication is public. And that will become evident in our our hero's journey here as we proceed through the episode. So what does this mean? Uh, What's this all about? Well, Ben, really, it's about being smart. In today's day and age, if you're not thinking and assuming and just, just put it in your head, everything that you write, I don't care any kind of form, right? You could put it in Braille. That Braille's going to make it public, right? So texts, emails, everything, tweets, private Facebook messages to your friend that had a goldfish with the same name in fourth grade. Every piece of content that you create, especially written content, it can be super easy to share that and spread it, and it could be used against you in the future. The truth of the matter is that we have for quite some time now, lived in a digital age. This is a an era in which we just have to accept the fact that communication is very easily shared at this point in history. And as a leader, working with other people, you've got to still communicate with people all the time. And uh, when you're using the written form, sometimes there's, uh, you know, some other issues there. Um, and without the social cues that go along with face-to-face communication, things can be very easily taken the wrong way, or perhaps uh, people will understand it in a way that you did not intend. Yeah, I remember being a young person in the corporate environment, and I was like, why are all the leaders so stodgy? Now, some of that could have just been how they were brought up, but having come up through the executive ranks myself, it's about a level of professionalism that when you write something down, that that could be shared, right? Just Mm -hmm. like we've said already 10 times in this episode. And so having a bit of professionalism, I guarantee you, people weren't born to be the kind of corporate automaton acting people that they are. If you get them, if you get a few beers in them in a karaoke machine, you might see some craziness. But that doesn't help their career or personal brand in the workplace. And a certain example that comes to mind for me is when I was at infantry officer school, And we'd have to plan missions all the time. So you have to come up with like phase line, rally point names. And we started coming up with funny names for them. Like you put a bunch of guys in the woods. That's what's going to happen. Funny names are going to happen. But I remember um, the cadre that was run this segment came in and he's like, guys, listen, I'm just going to level set with you right now. If you're doing a mission, even a training mission, there is a risk that somebody could get injured and maybe maybe even fatally so. And once all the investigations go through, that information will be released to those parents. And you want to look like a professional organization, like you weren't goofing around. Like once we pass fa- phase line Budweiser, we're going to get to totally wasted at this. That does not communicate that this is a professional military force. Now, Were we all a bunch of dudes out in the woods? Yes. Did our brains come up with all kinds of inappropriate phase line names? Also, yes. Was that good for (laughs) us or our military? Absolutely not. (laughs) So when you're looking at these people that you're like, what a bunch of numbskulls I work for. They must have found like the boring club in the back of the library, you know, that they're not that way. It's just when it comes to specific written communication, you'll find there'll be more colloquial in their words, but when you write, you just got to expect that you're writing for the world, not yourself. 
I've been trying to figure out why things are so different with my team now. Did I say or do something wrong? Everything had been going well. Productivity was good. Morale was high. The only problem I could think of was the issues I've had with Brianne. She made a few bad decisions in our recent project, and it made me have to do some damage control with the client. I was really annoyed and frustrated at the time, and I remember sharing my frustrations about her with a few of my peers. And then it hit me. The email I sent to them venting about her. I went back to my sent emails and noticed that I actually had included Brianne on the email when I thought I had included Brian, one of my fellow managers. So now I'm guessing that Brianne saw the email and told the rest of the team that I was trash-talking her behind her back. She may have even forwarded the email to all of them. This is all making much more sense now. Oh man, the worst nightmare. Reply all. Somehow you sent an email that shouldn't have gotten sent. And this happens all the time, which if you're professional with your communication, this is less of a problem. But Ben, why does this matter so much? So it's important for good leaders to always assume that all written communication is public for a few reasons. And it really matters because this is also just a call to virtue. What you espouse as your values should also match your lived values. So your written communication should reflect your commitment to professionalism. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't communicate privately with folks, but you should do it in a way that if your written communication was revealed, it would not reflect poorly on you. This is about integrity. Good leaders have integrity as part of their brand, Ben. Right? Everybody's worried about, I want my personal brand to be hot. I want to look great in a suit. Look at me. All my Insta LinkedIn's follow me. <laughs> but that is not your brand. Right? Professionalism, integrity, these are the hallmarks. And you know what? Outside your written communication, let your words also be true. So you need to realize that people who don't know you might read your communication. Now, Ben and I slack all the time to each other while we're working on stuff like episodes. And we have some inside jokes, right? And that's fine. But somebody else looking at those jokes might not get some of the stuff we're saying. So in the workplace and even with texts with people that are kind of professional friends or associates, make sure that you calibrate those messages for a general audience. A good rule of thumb is if your mom read this in the paper the next morning, would she feel okay about it? I never really was able to earn the trust back from my team. I've since moved on to a different company, and I've learned how much more careful I need to be about my communication, my written communication in particular. Email is very powerful, but I've learned how important it is to be careful with what I write. Now when I write any email, I think to myself, would it be okay with anyone seeing this? Could I defend what I've written to anyone? This has been a helpful way for me to think, and it also has helped me bring my values more in alignment with my actions. Being a leader demands that I make decisions and communicate at the highest level of integrity. And I've learned how important written communication is to this equation. All right, so let's talk about three things you can do today to help you execute, assuming all written communication is public. Great. So there are three things. Number one, know that as a leader, your written communication is held to a higher standard of professionalism. You know, some people say dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Well, you should write with that same idea in mind. Right. The second thing is to slow down, right? We move so fast with all these digital communication things. A few, a 30 seconds or two minutes more isn't going to hurt you. Make sure that you only use written communications for messages that are well suited for written communication. Know that your intended audience might not be the same as the actual audience that eventually receives your messages. That's right. Some topics are just better suited for in-person communication or phone calls. And another thing here is just be very careful with humor. So your inside jokes that you have with your team or with some person, they may not be funny when they're not inside anymore, so to speak. Right. So we had 
First, know that as a leader, your written communication is held to a higher standard. Second, slow down. Make sure that you only use written communications for messages that are well-suited for written communications. And the third, before you click send, ask yourself, would I be okay with anybody else seeing this email? If not, you should reconsider. It's important just to remember that email and all other written communication lives on. It can be forwarded easily and it can be forwarded to anyone. So again, those three things that you can do. Number one, know that you're as a leader, your written communication is held to a high standard. Second, slow down. Third, before you click send, ask yourself, would I be okay with anyone seeing this email or seeing whatever it is that you're putting out there in written communication? Thanks for listening to Good Leaders Do This. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast, tell a friend about it, and give us a review wherever you listen. For more information, including all previous episodes, visit goodleadersdothis.com. And if you're interested in our in-depth conversations, including episodes with guests, check out the Indigo podcast wherever you listen. We're glad you tuned in. Until next time, remember that good leaders assume all written communication is public.